Right, this video is about making a homemade vented dipstick for your Harley Davidson. Catch you inside. Revelator Alpha. Hello, welcome to Revelator Alpha. Hope you're enjoying the channel and the series of videos. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share and check out the website revelatoralpha.com. So, I'm doing lots of research into the crankcase pressures on the uh, M8 engines and also for the external breather kits as well, whether they actually make any real difference. If you watch some of my recent videos about uh, putting fuel additives through as well to clean the pistons, uh, you'll see them up there, but they're all in the archives. So just scroll back into the videos and you'll see them all there. Okay, so this one is really about the vented uh, dipstick or dipstick that you can buy now fueling and a couple of other manufacturers make one as well i believe here in the uk they're coming in the region about 320 pounds which is all 330 pounds uh, even if we try to import it from the us you know after taxes and import taxes and shipping it equates around the same kind of price well actually i think that we can make something here for pence or maybe no money at all <laughs> It'll work exactly the same, but you may want to buy the really expensive one uh, if you believe it's really going to make a lot of difference. I'm not 100% sure it does make a lot of difference. There's lots of people claiming that the engine runs better. If you've done lots of stage upgrades and cam changes, then there's a potential for that crankcase pressure to be uh, even greater. So maybe there is an argument for this vented dipstick. But with this vented dipstick, what you're trying to do is prevent that uh, crankcase pressure building up too great. So it actually pushes oil past the piston rings uh, into the combustion chamber. The other thing uh, which you're trying to minimize is actually the amount of uh, hot air or, or oily hot air that goes through your external breathers back into your throttle body. Now, the vented dipstick doesn't actually prevent that. It might minimize it, but it just, it doesn't actually prevent it. So you may want to fit your external breather kit if you feel that this is definitely what you want to do. But as I say, watch your other videos and see the chronological order of uh, the engine after 10K miles after doing nothing to it, then putting the fuel additives through, then doing the vented uh, dipstick, and then obviously the external breathers, and then eventually you'll see there's a pattern emerging of how these may make a difference. Right, let's get this dipstick off and I'll quickly show you how we can do it. Right. Okay, so I'm in the workshop now, so I've got the dipstick here, and basically you've got the cap on top, and you've got the obviously main shaft here. Uh, this is actually hollow. What you need to do is drill some very small holes uh, at the top here, just in the top there. One or two, no, nothing more than that, and actually quite small. The next thing you're going to do is get one of these, uh, which is, uh, you've probably got this lying around, it's one of these... Um, inflator adapters for a football or something like that and uh, you basically what you're going to do is actually drill another hole right through the top a smaller diameter than this and actually jam this through then this will be your vent okay and it'll be a free vent now on top of this you can actually attach a hose if you want to and then an inline valve if you want to do that but do you know what? Just see how you go with it. First of all, if you think that there's actually oil seeping out of it, then attach a hose to this. If you don't, then, uh, well, just leave it as it is. Now, what you could do is fashion a little cap for this as well. Maybe drill some very small holes into the cap, uh, and that'll stop any sort of moisture getting in, that kind of thing. Personally, what I would do is actually attach a hose to it, just a little bit of hose, uh, hide it under the frame so that moisture won't be able to get into it. And then any oil that does uh, vent out, let's say, has got enough uh, room to travel. Anyway, all you need to do, just drill that into there, drill a couple of holes, bish bash bosh, done. Let's see if this works. You see, it's actually hollow, hollow. Okay, let's just do one this side. 
There we go, so we've got a couple of vent holes at the bottom there. Now we just need to uh, stick a hole in the top there to feed this through. Now the beauty of this, if let's say you screw it up for whatever reason, all you've got is the price of this as a dipstick, okay? Uh, if you think that the, the hole is too small or whatever, and you wanna replace it later, all you need to do is drill a bigger hole and then just tap in a thread uh, with a, with a one-way valve, that kind of thing, attach it to a hose. I'm just doing this as a very simple fix for you guys at home, uh, and it will cost you pence or nothing at all. You can go and spend 320 pounds or nearly $300, $280 if you're in the US for a fueling vented dipstick. Of course you could, or you could just do this. Uh, it may just work, so let's see. Okay, so the next thing then is just to pop this in here. The reason why you uh, drill a much smaller hole because it's going to be a very tight fit. There we go. Look, there we go. Now, you could put a little, little rubber seal on, on the underside. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Now, you could just put a uh, valve cap on there if you want to, if you're not too keen on it later on. But all you need to do then now is attach a hose to it. That's it. And then you just run it up the bike wherever you want. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to attach this on there like that, and then I'm going to hide it on the bike. Little Jubilee clip there, this on there, done. Right, all I need to do now is actually uh, get some hot water, so this hose will go over that. Let me do that. Right, before I put the hose on, uh, let me just th say this. If you feel you can get away with just a valve cap uh, onto there, uh, what you can do is just drill a couple of holes uh, in the top there as well. Get a decorative one of your choice. Just pop it on there. Done. You could do something like that. And obviously that's entirely up to you. This is a short thread. This is actually on this valve cap. It's quite a long thread. You could actually pack a little bit of gauze in there as well to catch a bit of oil if you wanted to. Drill a couple of holes in the top there if you really wanted to. But say so that's an option. Play around with it. See which works for you. Not too bad. I actually quite like the look of that myself. But what I'm going to do, I am going to go with the tubed uh, hose option. And uh, well, let's do that. No, I'm not having a cup of coffee. Uh, this is actually boiling hot water to soften up the hose before I attach it to the valve there. Now, there are lots of variations to this, I'm sure. Basically, all you're looking for is some kind of threaded part or, or some kind of tubing that is hollow that you can actually stick through the top of the valve cap. Now, you could do this um, with a, a, a brake bleeding nipple, okay? Threaded part, just stick that through there. Uh, old carb jets, okay? You could just do that. The actual aperture itself, it doesn't it's not that important yeah you might clog up with a little bit of oil uh, granted but if it's just a bit of air pressure release that'll be suffice as well anything with a hole in it that you can drill and tap into the the cap allow the air to flow through it that'll do so lots of variations on the theme right let's uh, get a jubilee clip for this that'll do as I say, if this doesn't quite work with this, then uh, you know what? You can actually drill in another hole. If that doesn't work, guess what? As I said, all you've done is actually create a hole into the uh, top of the dipstick, which is venting out anyway. The kind of, that kind of solves the issue really, doesn't it? Uh, also, um, if you really have buggered this up for whatever reason, then you just go and buy the fueling uh, vent kit, don't you? Simple as that, really. Right, dry that off. Let's see if this will go on. There we go, so as it cools down, that's gonna go rock solid against that valve. Right, back in there, done. Right, Jubilee clip over the top. Actually, I don't think you even need it because that's just gonna go rock solid, but look, we'll do it anyway. There we go, job done. Right, so all I need to do now is put this back on the bike and just uh, put this tubing up somewhere a cable tie it off. Uh, what I'm going to do also is put a, a one-way valve in it as well, uh, just so stuff can't get through. What you could do is this. 
Uh, you could buy these little inline filters uh, if you wish. Again, all you're ne really doing is just uh, finding somewhere for the oil to vent to, or oil air to vent to. And then with these little inline filters, actually what you can do is catch it as well. It doesn't need to go out to the atmosphere. So either way, works fine. Uh, you know what, it's, this is just a little inline fuel filter, but oil filter would be absolutely fine. All you're doing is preventing it from dripping to the ground. So have this on the bike somewhere, put this in there somewhere like that, and just uh, cable tie it just underneath. It doesn't have to be really extensive. See how you go. Right. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, uh, basically I've just taken the probe out right now. I'm just gonna pop this in there and just turn it around so that the vent hole is at the back there. Next thing, I'm gonna try and route this behind the electrical panel so that it just sits here. This is where I want it to, to vent out to. Out of sight, out of mind. Okay, so the tubing is now routed behind the electrical panel here, and now I'm just gonna find a place to hide uh, the filter here somewhere. Now you don't have to have the tubing this way, of course, you can route it any way you want. I'm just gonna have it up here, it's a little bit higher, it's gonna give the more expansion, if you will, uh, of any uh, air and oil to go up here, and then it can drain back down afterwards, simple. Right, I've got a point here, uh, I'm gonna cable tie this round here like that. It's not gonna interfere with the shock. Let me just quickly show you. There we go, it's just gonna loop round here, round here. That's it, something like that, like that, like that. There we go. And this won't interfere with the seat either. Snip that off, dip this in hot water. And all I need to do now is squeeze this filter on the end of that, cable tie it up, done. Now, the question is how much of a difference will this make? Well, in truth, I actually don't know. I don't think there's any data. I think there's a lot of people making big claims about this, but actually I don't know. Uh, so that's why I thought I'd come up with my own homemade uh, version of it and see if I notice any difference. So in subsequent videos, I'll let you know how I get on. That's it, that's all I can say really. But instead of spending 300 pounds or 300 dollars on this, you could easily make this yourself. It's just a vent at the end of the day. Now, you may wanna go for the really expensive one because it looks a lot better, I grant you. But if this is fit for purpose, yeah, works for me. All right, let me see if I can get this on now. This is the second mug of water. Uh, yeah, it's really cold. Probably not best to do this in winter. Try and do this in the summer or in a well-heated garage. Right, it is on. Now, just uh, do this, cable tie it, job done. Right, there we go. Uh, it's all in place. Just stick the uh, seat back on, done. Right, a homemade vented dipstick for your Harley Davidson Milwaukee 8 engine whether it's a Tora or whether it's a soft tail. That's it, uh, that's what you do. Bit of hollow tubing, uh, on bicycle valve, whatever, whatever you wanna do, a bleed nipple. It's all amounts to the same thing really. Just drill a couple of holes into the hollow shaft, drill a hole in the cap, fit some tubing or whatever you want, and maybe with an inline filter as well. That's entirely up to you and just see how it works. And it may just be enough. We shall see in future videos, but I'll say I am planning to do an external breather kit. I am planning to test other fuel additives to see if it'll clean off the pistons as well. Then we'll see from this point on, in let's say 5,000 miles or 10,000 miles time, what's the condition of the pistons? Will this work? Will the external breather kit work? And is that definitive proof? There you go. Well, I hope you found that useful. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Check out the website at revelatorhealth.com. But this vented a dipstick just costs you pennies as opposed to hundreds of dollars or pounds or shekels. Ta-da.